In this video, I'm going to show you how you can make your own RF low pass filter for use with 88 to 108 megahertz FM transmitters. You can design it for whatever you would like. But for the one in this video that's going to be made, it will be blocking out all frequencies above 125 megahertz and allowing everything under 125 megahertz to be transmitted. So everything that's over 125 will be greatly reduced or eliminated. That's why it's called a low pass. It allows the low frequencies to pass and it blocks the high frequencies. If you wanted a high pass filter, that would allow the high frequencies to pass and block all the low. Now a few years back, I showed you how to make this nice little 4 watt FM transmitter. It works extremely well. I use it a lot. It has a little cooling fan on top. I have a video for this. On off switch, power supply, and this is just a regular 75 ohm coax connection. And that threads onto my antenna. Now when I released this video, it only had the transmitter portion of the circuit. It did not have a low pass filter in with the circuit. So the circuit I'm going to show you now, you can add to this circuit or any other circuit up to about 25 watts. Now even though you design a transmitter to put out a specific frequency, now for example, let's say this one here was designed to transmit at 100, I use 107.9, I actually go a little outside of the band. But say you set the transmitter to transmit at 100 megahertz, if you take a frequency counter, like this one right here. So even though what you're transmitting at 100 megahertz, you may see on here 200 megahertz or 300. And that's what you're trying to stop. You only want to have the transmitted frequency of 100. And you want to block out everything above that because if you don't, it could interfere with the aircraft bands and military bands and you don't want to do that. So you definitely want to make sure you're blocking all the frequencies that could possibly be transmitted above the 100 megahertz frequency. And that's where this circuit comes in handy now. Now the one I'm going to show you, let me move this, is this one right here. It's a very simple circuit. You only have three coils, which you make out of 18 gauge solid magnet wire or enamel wire and you're going to need four capacitors, a 27 pico, two of those, and a 56 pico farad, two of those. And this configuration here is designed for allowing all the frequencies under 125 megahertz to pass. Everything above that will be attenuated or greatly reduced or eliminated so you don't have the problem of interfering with other frequencies. Now in the video description area I'm going to include a link there's a calculator which you can use to calculate whatever you want for your low pass filter. Now say you want to transmit up to 200 so you could design this to work up to 200 and block everything above 200. So that link will come in very handy. You can check that out in the video description area. Now what I did, it calls for these three coils. Now each one of these coils you see here, these three, is a five turn six millimeter ID. And what that is, you're going to wrap five turns of the 18 gauge solid wire around a form that's roughly six millimeters or a quarter of an inch. Now in my case, I did not want to have long coils. I'd rather have them a little narrower like you see here. These are three turn coils. Now as long as the inductance matches what these are, now these are roughly 0.1 microhenry each. So using an online calculator, I came up with a three turn coil wrapped around a three eighth inch core and that's what I did is I used a drill bit like this and I wrapped it around that three turns. So it's a good idea once you wind these, grab your needle nose like that, give it a little bit of a bend. Once you did that, then you can grab here and roll it up. And then you see you got that. I'm going to do the same on this one. I'm going to put a little bend towards the top of the coil and then I'm going to grab it there and roll and as you can see now it has the legs the right way when it goes onto the clad board 
it'll be just off the board a little bit and it's perfect. You want it close to the board, but not laying on the board. Now the capacitors are nothing special. These are the 27 picofarads and these are the 56s. You want to make all your connections as short as possible when you solder everything. So all these, now the legs will be cut off very short. So that's pretty much all you need to make this low pass filter. Now to do this, I'm just going to use a regular copper clad board. It's fiberglass on one side with like an epoxy and the copper. It's all shined up, ready to go. I want to keep the layouts pretty small. All right, so I want to do something like this. You see each coil, so you see each coil is roughly 90 degrees from the other one. It's perpendicular to this one, and that one is perpendicular to that one. So I'm going to want to have a pad cut in this area here. I'm going to want to have a pad cut over there. I'm going to have a pad cut over here, and a pad cut over there. And then, these capacitors will go from the pad to the, the uh, ground, which is the plate. So I'd solder one there, one there, one there. So what I'm going to do now is cut this with my Dremel, with the cutoff wheel. Now you're going to want to use a abrasive cutoff wheel just like this. That's the easiest way to do it. I'm going to go cut this and come right back. I'm going to cut it straight across there, and then I'm going to cut it across here. And then I'm going to cut each one of these pads out. And when I'm done, I'll come back and I'll show you what it looks like. All right, now once it's cut, this is what it's going to look like. You have all the pads. It was very easy to do with the Dremel. You can see right through. Now it's also a very good idea once you do this, because it could always be a hairline of copper left. Even though it looks like it's clear, it may not be. So you want to put that down. Put on your DMM to a continuity setting. Then using your continuity meter, or you could put on even a low ohms range. All right, let's do that. Touch it to the ground. That's the resistance of the wires, 0.1. So now I'm going to go to each pad and nothing should happen. All right, so you know there's no little hairline pieces of copper that are connecting the pads to the ground. So you just have your ground, which is good, and all of these are separate. So now you're ready to go. The next step, you're going to be soldering this all together. Ideally, this should be done on the transmitter board. If you can't put it on the transmitter board, if there's no room, you're going to position this board where the N would go from the RF input right here. All right, you want that N to be located right next to the output to the antenna on your FM transmitter. So say this box right here is your transmitter, and right here is where the antenna gets soldered onto, and that's the ground for the antenna. You would put the N, which would be right here, right next to it, and then you could actually solder across, so now it's direct, and it goes right to that pad, and then the end of it here, or whichever pad is going to be the end, then you would re-solder the antenna with the ground onto that. In my case, I have room for one of my transmitters, so I'm going to do it this way. Once you use the Dremel to cut everything, or you can acid etch, but the Dremel's a lot faster. The next step, you want to get some 400 grit sandpaper, like this, or 600, and just go over the whole thing. Make sure it's really nice and shiny and clean. The solder will flow nicely. Clean it up. The next step is to position everything. Put that one there. This one will go in that position. I'll bend the leads to make them a little better when I put them in position. This one will go here. So they're all 90 degrees to one another. And then I'll have room to put a capacitor, 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 and capacitor. So let me get my soldering iron ready to go, and we will hook this all up. All right, after you have your board clean and the lines all cut, take a razor blade and make sure you take all the enamel off of the legs of the coils. 
And you're going to do that to each and every single one of them until it's nice and shiny. I did that to all of these already. My helping hands is holding that position for me. A little bit of no clean flux. I'm going to put a, a drop on each one. And I'm going to solder that leg down first and then move on to the next one. Good idea of a fan going, don't breathe the fumes in. And that's perfect. Do not apply too much heat to this board. If you overheat it, what's going to happen, you're going to separate the copper from the fiberglass board and this will just fall off. So just put just enough for a nice flow like you see there and you're done. Then you also want to make sure that you didn't bridge the line that you cut with the solder to the other side of the board which is the ground. Make sure it's good all the way around. Now that that's done, you put a bead right here. All right, let's do it here now. Put a lot on the solder, let it beat up. Done. That. Very nice. Now I'm going to use the helping hands again. All right, now let me position this. We put a little more flux on this. Sixty forty solder to me is the best. It flows the nicest. The lead free is better for your health, but it's but it does not flow as nicely. Clean that tip. Paper towel to me is also easy. Very nice. Okay. Out of this one. Okay. Let's take a look at this. Now I'm going to put the capacitors in and we should be good to go. Let me just clean these legs off. Get them nice and shiny. This has been laying around for a while, this component. Clean it up nice. Now I'm going to bend it like that. I'm going to cut the legs off. Okay. And the other side of the capacitor goes right to the ground, to the plate. Put a blob there.
Okay, we're going to put that there. And another drop. That looks great. Take that right to the ground. Two more to go, we're finished. Let's take the 56. So you can see this was a nice little layout. The way the coils are arranged, they're not in a straight line. Now this one, I'm going to want to go that way. So let me put that like that. There's a decent amount of solder on there already. Come in with my left hand. I'm not good at lefty, but oh well. That's perfect. Push this capacitor down over to there. And let me solder this. Just make sure the layout's nice. That's done. Make sure you use to solder on these boards, use around a 40 watt soldering iron. Down to the last capacitor here, and then the low pass filter is complete and ready to be installed in your transmitter. there. That looks very nice. We push it outward a little bit away from the coil. And let me do that one right there on the end. That's it. And there's the circuit. Now it doesn't make a difference which end I feed into, either that coil first or that one, because it's symmetrical. So you have a 27 going in and a 56, and on this side you have a 27 and a 56. So you can feed it either way. I would now disconnect the output from the transmitter going to the antenna and feed it into here, and then the other side here would go out to the antenna. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please rate it a thumbs up subscribe and also post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Thank you.